Last week I joined a game jam where the goal was to make a game that had multiple phases in the same level. So my idea was something like Titanfall 2 with some inspiration from Quantum Break here and there. I then made a video where I created the main character, implemented a locomotion system and made the level design. And today I'm going to finish it by adding the gameplay mechanics for time travel and weapon combat for my last two days of the game jam. So let's get started. The first thing I started developing was the gunplay mechanics. I wanted something that played very fast and very snappy, so ideally I would need a machine gun. Luckily I found just the right one on the marketplace. And using the ALS gunplay animations combined with this asset I was able to achieve a fairly smooth gunplay where you can run around and get into cover. One thing that I wanted to make was a smooth zoom every time you aim. So for that I made a very simple timeline that is going to play when you click to zoom. Timelines are awesome for things like these because you can get a really good interpolation that also feels very nice during gameplay. My objective here is to have something that feels very action oriented and gamey like control for example, so the weapon zoom would not restrict the player movement besides sprinting. In order to get proper line traces that would come out of the gun and hit the exact center of the screen, I made one line trace that comes straight out of the camera and it is going to hit everything that is right in front of it. Once that returns a hit, I get that location and I make another trace, this one coming out of the gun barrel. From that I make the direction of the second trace and from that I spawn a bullet. And then the idea is that this bullet is going to hit something, send a message and say, hey, I just hit you, so I want to deal damage. And if this thing has a health component, it is going to take this damage and it is going to receive this message. Of course, I would still need to make a health component, so let's make one. In Unreal, you can make actor components and attach them to your actors. So with that, you can reuse the functionality between everyone. It is pretty similar to regular classes in Unity, if I remember correctly. After creating the health component, I made a simple function to drain the health and the amount it should drain, it is going to come from an input. The component is also going to handle shield and recharging, if the actor has any shields. And from that, I made a health bar UI that has a shield counter on top. This health bar is then put on top of characters' heads as a world widget rendered in screen space. This UI is going to check on the health component to get the most accurate values. The same health component is also applied to the player, with a UI on the screen that also gets connected to this component. Up next, I'm going to work on the AI for the enemies, which will be very, very simple. What I'm planning to do is for enemies to shoot you as long as they have line of sight. If you take over, they are going to reposition themselves and try to get into another position where they can shoot you from. It is not perfect, but I think it is going to work well enough to the point where you can have some fun with it. This is what my behavior tree is looking like. It is split into two areas, one for just roaming around the map and another one for combat. While the enemy does not see the player, they won't be alerted. So they will need to find a new point to roam, go there, wait, then do it again. If the enemy gets a target, either by seeing the player or by being shot, they will then start doing this section here of the behavior tree. If the player moves to an area where the AI does not have a clear line of sight, it is going to try and find a new position to relocate to. As I said, it is very simple but gets the job done. Now we finally get into the coolest part of this jam, I think, which is the two areas embedded into the same level or two phases. I originally wanted to make this work using level layers, where I'd have a base layer, a future layer, and a past layer. But that wouldn't really allow me to have echoes of objects left from the opposite phase, because if you are in the past, 
I wanted the player to be able to see future items kind of phasing in and out of existence, and same thing for the future. So instead of level layers, I decided to make a material solution combined with another component. So let's first start off with a material. I got a free glitch texture from Google and I made that into a flipbook material, which makes this sort of animation effect that I think is going to work well with what I want. After that, I made a component that is going to locate the player and get assigned to an event dispatcher. So every time the player warps, it is going to call this event and everyone is going to get notified. From there, I had a boolean variable for past and future. This would ensure that I can keep both times separated and allow for the player to switch in and out from them. If the player is phasing outside of this object's time, it is going to take every mesh inside of this actor and it is going to change the materials on it to this warp material. And if the player is phasing into the object's time, it is going to take all of the original materials and set everything like it used to be. Also, if the actor this component belongs to is a character, I made it so that it will get frozen in time too, giving this really neat effect. And that is it. The system itself is working. Now all I need to do is add this time warp component to any environment object or character in my scene and we got a final-ish game. Another thing that I did was alter the lighting and everything related to that on the scene every time the player warped, just to change things up a little bit. I also got the ambient sound for Half-Life 2 to use in the future environment. Yes, I have no shame. And some ambient forest noises for the past. Now every time the player warps, it changes up the lighting in the scene as well as the ambient noises. This is what the final game looks like. And that is it. Subscribe for more game gems and game development videos. Also, check out my game on Steam, SparkMods. 
it's pretty cool. And join the Discord server to be a part of a community of awesome people, and I will see you guys on the next video.